going to talk about the Residential Utility Extension Program. And this is something that was passed by council uh, a couple of months ago and is now effective. And it deals with how do we incentivize residential development inside the corporate limits. Um, just in general, first, we have to have utility funds available. Obviously, if we don't have the city funds to provide for this material, these materials, then we can't uh, enter into an agreement, but we do have adequate funds in sewer and water as we speak right now, but each time one comes in, somebody wants to do this, we'll check and make sure we do have the funds available. And this program is for water and sanitary sewer materials, and it's going to be for water pipe six inches and larger, valves six inches and larger, fire hydrants, sanitary sewer, you're going to have pipe eight inches and larger, and manholes. And everything else will be the, the responsibility of developer, installation, other material cost, and the title to any of these materials are to remain with the city. Now there's some developments on the fringes of the city limits that are in water utility districts and don't have water from the city. And we cannot provide water pipe in those instances when you're in another utility district because it, like I said, that material has to remain with the city, the title to the material all through the process. So uh, down for qualifications, a few things, just three really major ones. One, you have to be inside the corporate limits. And that's not saying, and you'll see some maps in the back up here, and I'll put one up on the screen when I'm done, but these maps represent parcels 10 acres or larger inside and outside the city, and I'll talk about that, that could be a potential for residential. They're residentially zoned in the city or agriculture or residential zoned in the county, and they're close to uh, available utilities inside the city. So if it's in the urban growth area but not in the city, obviously what we hope this does is entice people to want to be part of the city and request incorporation to uh, save some money on the residential development. But it has to be a major subdivision, which we define in our subregs as three lots or more. And obviously the utilities have to be available to those areas. Uh, process is fairly simple. You have a preliminary plat approval by planning commission. Then you have to go through the normal design. It's really the same process. We do have new design standards that were adopted that are online that you can look at. Just some slight modifications in them, but they are there. If you haven't downloaded and looked at them, please feel free to do that. Uh, they'll have to get approval by the state, any utility designs. Then we'll do what an estimate on those materials, these right here that we're talking about, and we'll obtain pricing. We do yearly water and sewer bids, so we'll have ev all the pricing every year already except for manholes because they are job specific. So that will be the only difference is we will have to get manhole pricings based on the actual subdivision, the design. Um, once we have that pricing, we can take an agreement to the city council for their approval for this process. And once that is approved, you'll post a surety in the form of cash or letter of credit for the material cost. That's the six inch and larger, eight inch larger sewer. And you'll also have to pay the sales tax, and that's state law right there. That's why the sales tax piece is in there. But once all that's done, you've got all your approvals posted to cash surety, then you'll complete the installation of the infrastructure, and they'll have to be by license, just the normal stuff, licensed contractor to city and state specs. We'll inspect the process, you know, the process like we do now, and you'll have to provide record drawings for that. And once all that is complete, there'll be an acceptance, like I said, just like it is now by the city, and the surety will be returned to the developer once it's accepted. So all the money that you put in, the cash bond will be returned. You have already paid sales tax. So really the only cost you'll be out, you'll get out is everything except this. And that can be quite substantial in some of these. Think of your developments if you didn't have any cost for water and sanitary sewer materials, those right there. So we hope that, uh, once again, that that provides a good incentive to everybody to want to take part in this program. Uh, 
You say, how's the city going to recover your cost? You know, a lot of people ask that. Well, what we do is we'll, we recover it through our water and sewer tap fees, and it's going to be the greater the current tap fee or the per lot tap fee based on material costs, whichever is greater. So current tap fee, sanitary sewer, $1,000, water, $800, and that's non-developer supplied materials. We still have that program that if you pay for all the materials and put it in, the tap fees are $100 inside the city or $100 a piece. So you, if you don't opt to use that program, those tap fees would be 100 But if you use this program, then the tap fee to the home builder or the property owner would be 1000 or 800 Based on the material cost and the number of lots, if it's higher than 1000 or 800 it would be whatever that greater cost is. I think most of them will be, probably the majority of them will be less than that. So it's, uh, like I said, uh, just a real great opportunity to uh, look at residential development and see if this will help you out or entice you to start residential developments in the city. Basically, everything inside the red line is the, are the corporate limits, current corporate limits. The green properties represent 10 acre or larger tracts of land in the city that is residentially zoned and that has utilities, of, have utilities available to them. You can see that we just did it off our GIS. There's several, some of it could be difficult terrain, some of it could be flat, but there are several parcels in the city that are currently residentially zoned that uh, are available for that development. The pink is gonna be your outliers in the urban growth boundary that are outside the corporate limits. But once again, they're 10 acres or larger and represent an opportunity once again if you want to incorporate one in the city and take advantage of that utility incentive that would be the prime time to do that and it's all built around of lowering your cost to develop here in the city